Om Sam Saraswati Namaha Namaha Hey everyone. This evening on page 72 of the Chandipat, we're going to begin the Argala Stotram, and it begins Atha, Argala Stotram, and there's a Sandhi there. So Atha means, and now, presenting... And so, and this is the praise that unfastens the bolt. And just picture a dead bolt lock that's closing and binding the door to the secret of the Divine Mother shut. And what we want to do is unbolt that lock so that we can open up the doors. And that's just what we're going to do by remembering. Remember, when we lifted the curses from the Chandi, we remembered what the Chandi was all about. We said, we're going to put too much and too little into balance in order to have the right amount. And then when we put on the suit of armor, we remembered that the goddess lives all throughout our body inside and outside. And now in order to the, open up the bolt and open up that dead bolt lock so we can open up the doors to the secret, we have some more remembering to do. We're going to remember this is a prayer for her form. And it's a prayer for, for all welfare. And it's a prayer for victory over our little selves. And it's a prayer to remove all hostility, all enmity of any kind, not an unkind word to anyone. No argument. Only we have solutions, we have no problems. So now let's open up that bolt and read and understand how it is that we put ourselves into the bhava of being able to open up the door to the secret. Isn't that beautiful? It really is. Atta, and now presenting the respected mantras of the praise that unfastens the bolt, the consciousness that pervades all is the seer. And why is he the seer? Because he's going to protect. He's going to make us remember all the time. Every time my mind, my tongue wants to speak without consulting my mind. And my mind is going a million miles a minute without consulting my heart. The consciousness which protects us is going to put everything in a balance and make my mind and my heart and my tongue work in unison. So we think before we speak and we feel before we think. So, the consciousness that pervades all is the seer, understood 32 syllables to the verses, the meter, the respected goddess, great goddess of true wealth is the deity. She is the great goddess because she gives us the criteria by which to discriminate what is wealth. What is the true wealth? And we did remember her beej mantra, Shreem Shaw means peace. Ra means your mind, E means your heart, and Anuswar means perfection. The perfection of peace in your mind and your heart is the wealth, and that is the criteria by which we're going to discriminate, and we're going to pray to the consciousness which pervades all to help us, protect us, so we speak when our mind and our heart is one in peace. Then, uh, the the tongue can move. <clears throat> For the satisfaction of the respected mother of the universe, this appendage, this is one of the ungas, this appendage of the 700 verses is applied in recitation. Om, we bow to the goddess who tears apart thought, Mark and said. And here are a bunch of names of this lady that we really love. Om, she who conquers over all, Jayanti, Mangala, she is all auspicious or all welfare. Kali, she's the remover of darkness or she who is beyond time. Bhadra Kali, she is the excellent one beyond time. 
the bearer of the skulls of impure thought. Remember, she took all our negativities to herself. You have no more negativities left. You can understand that by looking at her. She's got this garland of all of my impurities right around her neck, and that makes me quite free from impurity. The reliever of difficulties, the loving forgiveness of others and of ourselves. Well, we, the, we want to forgive ourselves as we want to forgive others too because we know we're going to blow it. So mom, you're a nice mom. You'll forgive us too. Supporter of the universe, oblations of unity, or I am one with God, oblations of ancestral praise. You remember where we're at today is a consequence of the path that our ancestors prepared for us. They prepared, well, we were sitting up in heaven saying, where should I take birth? And we looked down on the earth and we said, there's a mother that can provide for me a future and she can give me the environment to nurture me in a certain way so that I have the experiences I need to get in order to come here to this place today, to be in this association with all these wise rishis and moonies and a great guru studying scripture on the top of a mountain. Now that's a mother for me. Uh, and so she chose that kind of a family to take birth. So we want to say to all of our ancestors who help prepare the way for us, thank you. You did a good job. I'm in a good place with good people doing good things, studying pure knowledge, uh, in, uh, being inspired to do even greater things in the future, you did a good job. Thank you, ancestors. The whole lineage of ancestors, any one of you who had any part in putting me where I'm at right now, now stay. I bow to you. Thank you all. To you. We bow, <laughs> all of you. Conquer, O oh goddess, slayer of passion and anger. Conquer, reliever of the troubles of all existence. Conquer, O oh goddess, who pervades this all. The dark night of egotism, we bow to you. And remember, we were discussing the dark night of egotism is that last vestige of the separation of I from the total. When I becomes the definition of union with God, I am Brahma, Aham Brahmashmi, I am Shiva, Shiva Aham. And there's this darkness we go through before we see the illumination. The darkness that exposes the light that's the Kalaratri, the dark night of overcoming this sense of separation. You can't see the light if it wasn't dark. So we want to say thank you. Thank you to the darkness and thank you for the light and thank you for the darkness for leaving and thank you for the light for coming. And that's why we praise dawn and dusk and, and all the intermediate points in between. We bow to you. To you who do defeated too much and too little, remember chapter one, too much and too little, the giver of the blessing of the creative, to the creative capacity. Uh, remember Brahma, the creative capacity was sitting in the lotus of the navel of Vishnu and, and too much and too little said, let's get that guy out of balance. <laughs> <laughs> Let us devour his creativity. We'll put him out of balance. You don't have enough. You've got to get an education so you can get some money, so you can get some groceries, so you can pay the rent. So you can, you've got to get more. And so I, she, this goddess, she defeated too much and too little and she put them into balance. And she made us know what's the right amount. How much do we need to accomplish our objective? To fulfill our purpose. How much do we need? 
And we can't really know that until we know our purpose. And we can't really know that until we've defined our goals. And we can't really know that until we make our plan. And we can't really know that until we've got the budget. But we know we want the optimum amount. Give us your form. Now, that has many levels of meaning. First is, show yourself to me. The second meaning, other than show yourself to me, Divine Mother, is give it to me. Make this form your form. Make me reflect your attitude entirely. Make me uh, a disciple, a real shisha, a real reflection of the true guru, of the example in my life. Can I be the reflection of your example? In my own way, my own inimitable way, you make me a reflection of the guru. Make me, give us your form. Give us victory. Can I, can I please defeat this little ego I that says, me? <laughs> it's, it's, I gotta be me? I don't want to be me anymore. Let's defeat this little uh, ego I that says I and mine and I'm separate and I'm different and I've got to be unique and I've got to be recognized for my unique qualities and characteristics. That egotistical ego, the one that says I am filled with self-conceit <laughs> or I am filled with self-deprecation. Either way, they both say, I am the most important person in my life. Give us victory. Let me remember you. Give us welfare. Uh, now, a welfare, it also means fame. Yes. It means welfare and fame. Two, two, two meanings. And welfare, of course, you give me unoti, give me increase, give me, uh, let, make me better than I am. And give me your fame, let me remember you. Or make me famous because I do remember you. <laughs> make me known as the disciple of you. So, it, in various ways, we're asking for wealth and welfare and fame. And remove all hostility, destroy all enmity, make me in harmony in every circumstance, in every situation in my life. No hostility. First of all, we're going to listen, and second, we're going to think, and then we're going to discriminate, and then we'll respond. Don't allow ourselves the luxury of making emotional responses. Please control ourselves so we make appropriate responses, not emotional responses. We want to make the response that's designed to achieve our objective. If I want harmony in the household, I'm not going to respond with anger. I won't raise my voice. That's not going to bring harmony. Even if I'm right, I'm only going to have problems. I exacerbate the situation. <clears throat> Remove all hostility. Destroy all enmity. Make me discriminate. Make me think before I respond. Rupam dehi. Joyam dehi. Yasho Dehi Visho Jiki. That's the refrain after every verse in this piece. And that's the purpose for this removing the bolt, opening, unfastening the deadbolt lock that, re, that binds the secret to the goddess in, in such a way that we, we want to open that, that door. We want to open that door so we can enter into the mystery of the goddess, enter into the mystery of the Divine Mother. And we do that by praying to her. The reason we're reciting these scriptures and studying this material is so that she blesses us with her form. She makes us pure disciples, pure reflections of her purity. Look in the mirror, what do you see? You see the reflection of the Guru. 
Jayam Deki, give me victory over my little ego self. Yasho Deki, make me famous as someone who loves you entirely. Or give me welfare, the highest welfare. Let me increase towards in that direction. And Dvisho Jiki, all enmity, all, don't destroy enemies, destroy my enmity. The feelings of hostility that rise up within us all when we don't get what we want. Cool. Just chill for a minute. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, just chill. <laughs> Hang for a minute. <laughs> and think about it. What do I really want? I want to be free from hostility. I want to be one with the form of the Divine Mother. I want to be famous as a reflection of someone who has conquered their little ego. That's what I want. Now, the widget or the wudget or the whatever circumstance it was is really, by the way, it's insignificant in comparison to the major goal, which is Rupam Dehi, Jayam Dehi, Yasho Dehi, Dvisho Jaki. So to you who caused the destruction of the great ego, giver of happiness to devotees, we bow to you. We do. I thank you for destroying this great ego. Uh, please do it again and again and again. Every time he raises his head, make this great ego smaller and smaller and smaller. Give us your form. Give us victory. Give us welfare. Remove all hostility. To you who slew the seed of desire, O oh goddess, destroyer of passion and anger. Uh, we've got both, both a, a chapter 7 and chapter 8 included here. Give us your form. Give us victory. Give us welfare. Remove all hostility. And remember in chapter 8, the seed of desire won the boon. Every time a drop of desire touched the ground, a new desire was born in that very same place until the whole world was pervaded by desire. Everywhere we look, there was another rock, the bija, there was another seed of desire. I want a, a, a widget, and in order to get the widget, I need a wudget. And in order to get the wudget, I need, a, I need some money, and in order to get the money, I need a job, and in order to get a job, I need some education. In order to get the education, I need some money. <laughs> Where does it stop? It stops when we fall in love with God. And we say, what is your purpose? <laughs> you, all right, drink up all these seeds of desire. Destroy passion and destroy anger and make, give me pure passion. The passion to be in love with you. I, I, if I love my wife, that's pure passion. If I love his wife, I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> I promise. You got, give me the discrimination, kill the impure passions, get rid of all the anger that's not going to get me what I want, remove the seeds of desire and give us your form, give us victory, give us welfare and remove all hostility. Slayer of self-conceit, self-deprecation, and sinful eyes. Remember, these guys come one after another. Self-conceit in chapter 9, self-conceit uh, self in chapter 10, self-deprecation in chapter 9, and sinful eyes in chapter 6. Give us your form. Give us victory. Give us welfare. Remove all hostility. Remember, self-conceit is all haughty and puffed up with pride and says, look what I accomplished. Look at me. I did it. I wish my arm was longer. I could pat myself more efficiently on the back. But I'm right, and I'm not going to listen to you, and I don't have to take that from you because I did it. By Jove, old man, you did it. You did it. And self-deprecation says, poor me, I blew it. <laughs> I'll never get it right. I shouldn't have. I could have done it differently, but I didn't. Sinful eyes, of course, everywhere he looks, he thinks of selfishness. 
What's in it for me? Ah, hmm. <laughs> uh, give me a little bit. Give me a little advantage. How can I cheat a little bit? How can I bend the rules? I like. Whoa, maybe I don't have to give a hundred percent here. Ah, <laughs> uh, he is sinful eyes is looking for ways to cut corners. <laughs> <laughs> All oh, revere your lotus feet, O oh goddess, giver of all that is beautiful, you do. Give us your form, give us victory, give us welfare, remove all hostility. Beautiful prayer. Rupam Dehi, Jayam Dehi, Yashu Dehi, Vishojaki. You of unthinkable form and activity, destroyer of all opposition, Give us your form, give us victory, give us welfare, remove all hostility. For those who bow to you with devotion, you remove all distress. As soon as you bow, you give up all the distress. All I can think of when I bow is the fact that I get to give my highest respect. I put the highest part of me at the lowest part of you and I give my highest respect knowing that the laws of gravity will cause the blessings to flow downwards give us your form give us victory give us welfare remove all hostility for those who praise you with full devotion O oh, you who tear apart thought you destroy all maladies, physically and mentally. Give us your form. Give us victory. Give us welfare. Remove all hostility. O oh, goddess who tears apart thought for those who constantly worship you with devotion. Constantly. No matter what we are doing. Give us your form, give us victory, give us welfare, remove all hostility. Give beauty, satyam, shivam, shundaram, it, true existence, infinite consciousness is really beautiful. It's really beautiful. That's why we decorate the altar every day with flowers and candles and incense and Make it beautiful. Give beauty, freedom from disease. Give me supreme happiness, param sukh. Give us your form, give us victory, give us welfare, remove all hostility. Grant the destruction of all that is disruptive. <clears throat> Grant increase in strength, Give us your form, give us victory, give us welfare, remove all hostility. O oh, goddess, grant welfare, grant supreme prosperity. Give us your form, give us victory, give us welfare, remove all hostility. O oh, mother of the universe, whose feet are rubbed by the crest jewels of gods and enemies alike. Uh, you, you go to the top of the, the crown, and that's the crest jewel. That's the jewel that sits on the top of the highest place, that sits on top of the head, which sits uh, on either a god or an ashura. Everyone bows down, and they put their, the crest jewel of their crown right against your feet. Give us your form. Give us victory. Give us welfare, remove all hostility. Make this person and these people endowed with knowledge, endowed with welfare, endowed with true wealth. Give us your form, give us victory, give us welfare, remove all hostility. You who destroy the great egotism of thought, you who tear apart thought, to us who bow to you, give us your form, give us victory, give us welfare, remove all hostility. The four-faced Brahma, the creative capacity, sings the praise of the four-armed energy of the Supreme Sovereign. Give us your form, give us 
victory, give us welfare, remove all hostility. The Lord of the daughter of the Himalayas. Daughter of the Himalayas is Parvati. Uh, she is the daughter of Parvat. And her Lord is Shiva. Sings the praise of the energy of the Supreme Sovereign. Give us your form. Give us victory. Give us welfare. Remove all hostility. The energy of the husband of the energy of the rule of the pure. The rule of the pure is Indra. And he is the husband of the energy of the rule of the pure, which is Indrani. <clears throat> Worships the energy of the Supreme Sovereign with pure feeling. Well, that means the king of the gods. Worships the Supreme Sovereign with pure feeling. Give us your form. Give us victory. Give us welfare. Remove all hostility. O oh, goddess, with your great staff of discipline, you destroy the egotism of thought. Can't do it without a discipline. You can pray for it, but you've got to pray with discipline. Give us your form. Give us victory. Give us welfare. Remove all hostility. O oh, goddess, mother of the universe, to the people who are devoted to you, you give inexpressible peace and delight. Is there any doubt about that? <laughs> I don't think so. To the people who are devoted to you, I, I, they're always worshiping you, they're maintaining a discipline for you, they're doing sadhana, they're doing a spiritual discipline to demonstrate the sincerity of their devotion. Give us your form. Give us victory. Give us welfare. Remove all hostility. Give me a wife in harmony with my mind. Please who follows the changes of mind and who can lead a family of noble birth across the difficulties of the ocean of objects and their relationships. And we're not just speaking of a physical life, although that in itself would be a tremendous accomplishment. Give me a spouse, either way, masculine or family, a feminine, who can follow the changes of mine and be in harmony with mine. And remember the verse from the Lolita Trishati where it says Shiva and Shakti revolve around each other mutually and reciprocally. Who understands this understands what is a center of energy. Give me a sparks, a partnership that is mutual and reciprocal and that can follow the changes of mind and evolve and lead our family across this ocean of existence to arrive at the shores of wisdom. I mean, here we are in this ocean of existence and we were trying to get to the shores of wisdom and leave the egotism of thought behind. Give me a partnership. Give me the energy, the shakti that will take me across that we can make that journey together mutually and reciprocally. And that's called a partnership. That's called a chakra. After reciting this hymn of praise, one should recite the great hymn of praise, the number of which is 700 verses. <clears throat> and he or she will attain to supreme perfection. Oh. Yes, wait, please. Let's stop for a moment and think. Did we really unfasten the bolt? Did we open the deadbolt lock that's fastening the secret, the, the doors to the secret of the Divine Mother shut? If we were successful, we could open up that door. We've got one more lock to open. But let's mm -hmm. see if there are any questions first. Om Sam Saraswati Namaha. Namaste. And I think we have a question from Seattle, from Sadat Vananda Saraswati Maharaj Ki Jai. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, two questions. First, uh, 
Could you say maybe the essence of the Argola Stotron is to see the goddess as the guru? Well, of course, the function of this guru is to take you to this guru. The function of this guru is to take you to that guru. The function of that guru is to take you to this guru. And there's a lineage, a parampar, there's a, a disciplic succession. Guru is Brahma, Guru is Vishnu, Guru is Devo Maheshwara. Guru Sakshat Parabrahma. Actually, she is the supreme divinity within your own self. Tasmi, and therefore, Sri Gurave Namaha. Therefore, we're bowing down to the Guru with the highest respect. So, if you have a teaching guru who gives you knowledge and he gives you the knowledge of how to do puja and how to sit still and how to worship and how not to fly when you're sitting in your asan, uh, the objective isn't to reach heaven uh, 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 with wings, it's to sit so still that you get there with consciousness. And now, if we find the teaching guru who can explain the the meaning of the scriptures and how to apply them in your life and how to make your life efficient because of having this knowledge, then you get to a guru who teaches you how to sit still and work for creation with love and joy and giving. And if you follow that example, you'll come to the example of the being that sits still and then that being will take you to the one in your heart. So we all work together. It's a team effort. Mm -hmm. uh, mutually and reciprocally. We're working together. Shiva and Shakti are working together. Another question? Yes, please. Uh, the, the part at the end about, um, give me a wife in harmony with my mind who follows the changes of mind and who can lead a family of noble birth across the difficulties of oceans of objects and their relationships. Does that necessarily have to be a physical embodiment of no, Shakti? No, absolutely. It does not necessarily have to be a physical embodiment. But you will find that if you have a family, you'll probably want a wife. And that wife will be in harmony with your mind. Now, there are two kinds of families that you're going to have. You're going to have physical children, and you're going to have metaphysical children. In either case, Shiva and Shakti will revolve around each other mutually and reciprocally. And it's most efficient to have both a father and mother <clears throat> or in your Guru Parampar. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 <clears throat> traditionally, sannyasis did not give initiation. Sannyasis didn't give diksha. Uh, only grahastas give diksha. Sannyasis do not cultivate attachment. If I give diksha to someone, then that, that individual has a special relationship with me that other people don't enjoy. And I'm taking karma from that individual, and I'm giving my love, and I have a special relationship, and then I'm paying special attention to those individuals with whom I give initiation. And uh, sannyasis, traditionally, in the old days, didn't give initiations. Uh, but w we found that it, it, the, the rules are evolving because mother and I are working together. Mm -hmm. uh, we only have metaphysical children, but we've got a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So much so that I can't communicate with them all. I don't believe it. Either can she. And we want to communicate with you all. So she does the telephone and I do the email. <laughs> I do intuitively. Yes, you do intuitively. <laughs> but uh, we have to do that all night too. <laughs> we go places. Can Sri Ma count my Shakti? Yes, she can. All right. But you have to become Shiva. She can become your Shakti if you can become her Shiva. Uh, because it's mutual and reciprocal. 
So you have to be prepared to give to her as you will want her to give to you. Believe me, it's safer to be a disciple. <laughs> yes, please. And so verse 11. Yes, please. Um, for those who constantly remember you with devotion. Yes. How do you remember the goddess with devotion? I when, really love you. you mean, like when you're, uh, like if you have like physical things like, uh, say you get flooded with adrenaline or something, you yep. get nervous, you get in a car wreck or whatever. How do you, how do you remember with devotion at that moment? I want to tell you a story of when we are putting the solar panels on the top of the mountain. <clears throat> uh, and I had ordered 160 pound bags of cement. And the guy came to deliver the cement and he delivered 80, 80 pound bags of cement. I said, that's pretty heavy. <laughs> He said, well, we, didn't, we ran out of the 60-pounders, and so we brought the 80-pounders, and it's the same amount of weight, but, you know, he, he got it, uh, uh, and he unloaded them uh, with his forklift. <laughs> and I had the privilege of carrying 80 trips with 80 pounds of cement up to the top of the mountain where we installed the solar panels. That's intense. And each trip, they got heavier. <laughs> so by the end of the day, I was saying, Mother, what a privilege it is to demonstrate my love for you <laughs> by getting this event to the top of the mountain. What, a, what an opportunity you have given me to demonstrate how much I really love you. Uh, it, it was a privilege. Give us your form. Give us victory. Give us welfare and remove all hostility. We can't afford the luxury of going with the flow of emotion that comes to us from time to time. Who knows, one word is going to make such a mess, you're going to have to be cleaning it up for months to come. <laughs> Why take a chance? Put the interlude of discrimination between your stimulus and your response. Don't allow emotion or adrenaline or whatever you want to call it to control your future. I mean, if you say one inopportune word to your spouse, you're going to be living in a battle zone for months to come. One word, one syllable, and you don't even have to say it. You don't even have to let it out. Why take a chance? Stop Control yourself, get the mantra, use the techniques we talked about in the Kashyap Sutras, get a mantra, get a something, and don't allow yourself to be overcome by inappropriate responses where you're going to spend the rest of your life digging out of the hole you just created. Don't allow that to happen, any of you. We have a leg. Stop! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Right then and there. And partners, each of you give a signal to your partner and show them the thumb, show them that palm, show them whatever you can, maybe the middle finger, but stop! <laughs> Don't get in trouble. Don't make a problem for yourselves. Don't allow adrenaline or feelings or emotions to overcome your discrimination and make a mess that you're going to spend a lot of time trying to correct. Just stop. I don't need to be right. I don't need to prove anything. I have nothing to, to show. I just want to live in peace. Please. That's all. We'll discuss it at another time when it's more appropriate. Stop! Every 
time you feel the adrenaline coming up, every time you feel that rush of energy, think of something nice. <laughs> move your consciousness, move your awareness into the presence of the Divine Mother. How would Mother respond to this circumstance? How would Sri Ma react to, these situ to this situation? Stop! Put any interlude of discrimination between your stimulus and response and give the appropriate response. Do not allow yourself the luxury of giving an inappropriate response. Is that the beginning of making everything an offering? Everything becomes an offering. It surely does. It most certainly does. I want to give you the best I possibly can. Whether it's my fellow workers or my spouse or my partner or my friend or my whatever. Stop! How do I want to handle this negotiation? I'm going to negotiate with every other being all through my life. I better learn the rules of negotiation right now because every time I come into approximation uh, into a physical location with any other individual I'm going to negotiate. We're going to negotiate for space, we're going to negotiate for time, we're going to negotiate for location, we're going to negotiate for something. <coughs> if it's a transaction, I'm going to negotiate the transaction. How do I want to negotiate? I've got The first thing I've got to do is create a rapport I can't get angry. That's not creating the rapport. It's not creating the environment conducive to negotiation. So stop and make everybody at peace and try to figure out what do I want to get from this circumstance? Why am I here? What's my purpose? What's my goal? Where am I going with this? Don't allow your emotions to rule your consciousness. With the strength of consciousness, you'll control your thoughts. I am Shiro. I, I, I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Our goal is to become like you. Rupam Dehi, Jayam Dehi. Give us your form. Kunjush. Stingy lady. Oh. <laughs> I'm not. Yes, you are. You didn't give it to us. Shell out. <laughs> Put up or shut up. We have a question from Nanda in San Jose. Namaste, Nanda Ma. Happy Navaratri, mm -hmm. dear Ma and Swamiji. Thank you. What makes this stotram a special or different from any other stotram for it to be called the praise that unfastens the bolt? It's opens up the door to the secret as soon as you remember that what your purpose is is to become the, the re pure reflection of the great example that's in front of you. If you want the victory over this little ego, if you want the, the, the welfare and the fame of being someone who has controlled his or her emotional being, if you want to destroy all enmity and all hostility, you have opened the bolt. You have defined your purpose. You define the goal. The reason I'm reading this is so that I can remember that I want to be a disciple. I want her form. I want to reflect her form entirely. I want to destroy this little ego and all its attachments and all the emotions that makes it get into trouble all the time. I don't want to be in trouble. Can't I just have some peace? Uh, I want to be famous for somebody who controlled himself. And I want to be famous for someone who has destroyed all enmity and all hostility. And that's why this stotram is so important to the understanding of what's in the chandi. Why are you going to read the chandi? What do you want to get from it? If I say I'm going to give me a, a, a pansika, give me five coins and I'll read the chandi for you and I'll change your karma. Is that what I want is five coins? I'm going to make a livelihood. I'm a priest now. Give me a dollar and 25 cents. Or in India, a rupee and 25 paisa. <clears throat> That's called Pansika Pai Pandit. Uh, the type of pundit who does puja for money. 
We also call them a chal dal pandit, uh, somebody who does it for rice and dal. Uh, they're, they're going to change your karma for a little rice. I don't think so. <laughs> I want to change my karma. So, Nanda, that's why it's such an important stotram to open up the door to the secret of the goddess. Why am I doing this? What do I want to get? What is my goal? What is my process? What is my objective? If I have all of that in mind, what is my motivation? If I can think of those things before I sit down and endure two hours of flapping my wings, uh, then... <laughs> I mean, it, it's lift-off time. <laughs> then I should be able, I should be in a better position to have discrimination. What is it that I'm trying to accomplish through these mantras? I open up the lock to the door. We have a question from Ambika in Princeton. Namaste Ambika, namaste Sham. Namaste. When we feel the emotions building, we can take a deep breath and say a mantra rather than say harmful words. What mantra is the strongest mantra we can say that will guarantee success? Or should we say, stop? <laughs> <laughs> stop! <laughs> stop will do fine. You can do it in any language you want. The point is that you do it. And you can use any mantra in your bag, in your arsenal of mantras. You can take any one. Every mantra comes from the root mantrayate. Iti mantra. A mantra takes away your mind, blows your mind. So it, you can use any mantra you want. Whatever comes to mind first, use it. <laughs> Don't abuse it. Use it. Whatever will work to put a moment, an interlude of discrimination when you're feeling emotionally overcome, use that tool. That is the astra, that's the weapon that with which you can confront the abuses of negativities, of the egotism that says, oh, I'm going to respond to that right now. I don't need my tongue to consult my mind. He'll say whatever he wants to say, and you'll deal with it. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't allow yourself the luxury of letting loose of your control. Use Om Namah Shivaya. Use Om Eng Ring Kling Jamundai Biche. Om Ring Sring Dun Der Gai Rin Ma. Om Sat Chit Ekam Brahma. Oh, she can say stop. You can say stop. <laughs> <laughs> and you can say it in English. Stop! <laughs> okay, Amika, stop! <laughs> We have a question from... You stop! <laughs> um, in verse 18, it talks about the four-phase creative capacity of Brahma. Yes. Can you talk about the four faces and their significance? Yes, oh, there. he's got four faces. He used to have five. He's got actually four. He had one's facing back. Yeah, we put him on the backside so he could see all over the place. But he sees in the four directions, and he wrote the four Vedas, and he, uh, uh, he, he exemplifies all the fours. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, the four Chaturbhartha, the four purposes for manifesting in a human body to achieve an ideal of perfection, to accumulate those resources necessary to the ideal. The perfection of all desires extraneous to the ideal and liberation, freedom from any other thought. <clears throat> the four objectives of manifestation, the four directions, the four Vedas, the four sources of knowledge. And so he embodies all the fours. Yes. Please go. Now we have a question from Moshami in Boulder. Namaste, Moshami Ma. Namaste. Assuming conflicts in the household arise from individual ego, will it be best to chant the Argola Stotram to deal with reactions? Will the goddess listen to the prayer done at the moment of excitement, or should we first calm down before chanting? Oh, if you can remember the two of you sit down together immediately. <laughs> Uh, if, the, if you can remember the two of you, where you are, just sit down and uh, sing them. Rupang Dehi, Jayang Dehi, Yasho Dehi, Vishodjaki, 
Give us your form, Mother. I, I mean, why should we be fighting about things in the household when we've got you? We'll, we'll negotiate. We'll revolve around each other mutually and reciprocally. We will become Shiva and Shakti again immediately if you can remember. And if you can't remember immediately, as soon as you remember, please sit down and you recite the entire Chandi together. As much as you can do, as much as you can do, bring peace and harmony in a, to your household. Uh, invoke the goddess of true wealth, that perfection of peace in your mind and your hearts. Make sure you remember we are partners working together towards a common objective, a common goal. Uh, now, uh, all right, get with the program. <laughs> get back in line. <laughs> Stop this nonsense, remove all hostility. We have a question from Julia. Namaste, Julia Ma. Namaste. You were saying, may I be you, in my own way, be a reflection of you, and that we go through the dark night of the small self. Please tell us how we become selfless, but still retain our own way. Well, selfless means selfishness is gone. Now, you will have your own ways of manifesting yourself in the purest ways possible, but you have no selfishness. <clears throat> you have a concept of self. I am going to cook this food for these people because <laughs> they may get hungry, and if they get hungry, that's a concept of self. And she gets up at five in the morning and she starts cooking for all the people. Wherever we're going to go for that day, she just brings a bag of groceries. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Wherever we go. <laughs> she does. And if she doesn't go anyplace, then she just sends it over to the other kitchen so you can add it to the prasad of all the people that are in the temple. And you are the carrier. <laughs> I, I get to be the bearer of Prasad. <laughs> but praise to the cooks. The, uh, Julia, actually what's happening is she has a concept that I exist, but she has no selfishness in that concept. She has given up the darkness of egotism, and she only enjoys the presence of light. And that's why our food tastes so good. Everyone who comes wants to eat more. <laughs> Not just because they're lazy <laughs> and they don't want to cook themselves, but because it tastes so good because it's, she cooks it for God. <laughs> we have a question from Divya in Gorgon. Namaste, Divya! In Kaisaho? Is it okay to chant these mantras as we go through our daily life? Say we are working in the kitchen, or driving, or even lying down. Absolutely! The ideal is Chandi Patam Diva Ratrao Kuriya Deva Nashamishaya. Whoever recites the Chandi in the day and the night becomes a divinity without a doubt. You become divine. While you're driving, while you're walking, while you're cooking, while you're talking, whatever you're doing, just keep as much as you can that bhavana with you. The whole bhavana of Chandi, the whole bhavana of the Orgala Stotum. I am remembering what it is I'm doing and why I'm doing it. I'm cooking this food, I'm cleaning this house because God lives here. God's going to come home to eat. God is, I'm a servant of God. Give me your form. Give me victory. Give us welfare and remove all hostility. We have a question from Sharanya in Walnut Creek. Namaste, Sharanya. Namaste. I have listened to other Chandi recitations, but at the Mandir, when the Chandi is chanted on Sundays, when the name of Kali is chanted, it always seems accentuated and said in a loud voice. Why is this? Because <laughs> we're a bunch of loud mouths. <laughs> Hippie sadhus. No, we love Kali here. I mean, we love Chandi. We love everybody. But, you know, there's something 
talking about Carly, she just jumps off the page. <laughs> she just she just grabs my head in her hands and takes her sword. And she just says, Carly! <laughs> That's why. No particular reason. If you want, we can chant like a bunch of bored Brahmins. <laughs> with, with no passion at all. But we tend to get passionate here, especially about people we love, the people that are important to us in our lives. We get really passionate about it. And for me, I think it's a good passion. I'm not ready to give up. I'm not ready to become a Vedantist and be dispassionate. <laughs> I want to be passionate about the things I love and the people I love. And so I accent, accentuate the names of the goddesses I love. Whenever she jumps off the page and says, I'm going to grab you by the scruff of your neck and cut off your head, I say, yes, please do. Here, here's a dot of <laughs> yes. We have a question from Nanda. Namaste, Nanda Ma. Why do we have different rishis as seers for each of the appendages? Should they not all be Mark and Dea rishi? No, we are all the rishis. There's going to come a chapter where it says Nanda Uacha, and there's going to be a, a chapter <laughs> that says Sri Ma Rishi. Uh, we are all the rishis. Uh, so in the same ways as uh, we have Gayatri Ushtuk Anushtuk Chanda, as the three chandas of the three episodes, they indicate the rhythm and uh, the meter of the bhavana. In the same way we have Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva as the rishis of the three episodes. In the same way we have Gayatri, Ushtakanashtapcha. In the same way we have Akali, and we have the deities, the rishis. The, and we have Brahma, Vashishta, and Vishwamitra, Adi, Shrat, Bimochan. In the same way we have different rishis. All of them uh, come together in celebration of the God. It's one family, all the rishis. We have a question from Kyle in Los Angeles. Namaste, Kyle. Namaste, Samantha. Namaste. Can you tell us how the guru knows when to take on the karma of a disciple and when the guru knows the karma is something the disciple needs to experience? No. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's a, there's no time. There's a, there's a feeling. There's a, it's not a logical process. It's not something that we think our way through. Kyle, Samantha, you didn't think your way through your love affair, did you? you I, I saw you in your wedding, you, you, you didn't think at all. You guys were so stoned and so stoked and you just, just you felt it. How did you know that she was the one for you? You felt it. You didn't think about it. You didn't write a balance sheet and say, okay, yeah, she's got this many good points and that. <laughs> you, you, you felt it. She said that. You said in your heart, that's my lady. That's my Shakti. Uh, Samantha did the same thing. She didn't make a logical decision what time it was that we should get married. You both came and said, Swami, when should we get married? I said, this date is the best. So, in the same way, the guru knows, and it's a priori knowledge, as Kant was to describe it. He said, you know it in your heart. There's not a logical deduction. It's not something that you, you say, okay, well, at this time, I'm going to take away your karma. The guru knows when it's appropriate to solemnize the relationship that already exists, that it's, it's so intense. You know when the diksha is being given. You know when you, you feel it. You feel that relationship is appropriate and it's time to say it in the temple before God. And that's how you know, Kyle. You, it's not, there are, there's no specific criteria by which we did deduce that this is the time when we should take away the karma, or this is the time where you should have that experience, or anything else. 
You feel your way through life. The object is not just to have a logical set of criteria by which you adjudicate every action of life. We want you to feel life and to groove with life and enjoy life and really discriminate against the negative aspects, the things that are going to take you away from feeling the purity and the clarity, but don't think your way through your love affair. You want to feel the love. So, Kyle, Samantha, feel the love. <laughs> Om Sam Saraswati Namaha Namaste.